At the start of Signalis, the king in yellow lays sealed on the desk, and by the end of the game, it is fully unbound. Investigating what undid these seals, as well as theorizing regarding them in general, can help us understand the game that much more, and get us that much closer to actually figuring this whole thing out. This is another part of my King in Yellow series where we investigate how the King in Yellow plays a part in the role of everything in Signalis. If you haven't been keeping up with the series, you should be fine. The only really required video for this video would be the King in Yellow Nowhere video, where I covered its connection to the flesh below. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> Warning, this video will contain spoilers about Signalis. Be sure to proceed at your own risk. If you haven't finished the game, I highly suggest you do. It's much better to experience it yourself than have it spoiled by this video. So to quickly recap something. In a previous video, we talked about the plates in Nowhere. These are the plates of eternity, sacrifice, and so on, that are used to unlock the door and proceed through the game. These plates are very much connected to the king in yellow, as they can be seen on the book sealing it. So, by understanding that in Nowhere there were these trials that you had to do, we can assume that the trials must also be done to undo the king in yellow. And that's really what this video is going to be about, exploring those seals on the book, and what exactly they mean, what we can learn from them, and so on. So, if this is the case, we can f go through the various trials Ulster went through, and we can try to figure out which caused the seals to fall off over the course of the game. However, knowing what event caused which is rather hard, so this is one of those examples of pure speculation. For this video, I'm going to use a little bit of data mining to establish a baseline. Massive disclaimer, Yuri, the director and dev of the game, did directly state we shouldn't do this. However, in this case, the exact order of what's unlocked and what isn't integral to the lore. What is integral is having a baseline and understanding that, hey, this is an idea on how these seals could have been undone, just to give kind of a opening of discussion in this regard, because there isn't a lot of discussion regarding the seals right now. So I'm going to be using it for this video to produce a theory that doesn't conflict with the data mining. However, if you have an alternate theory on what unlocks the seals that doesn't agree with the data mining, it could still be correct as per Yuri's vision. So using data mining, we can find which seals are on the book during the two distates. Using this, we can learn that prior to the first distate, love, eternity, and flesh were removed. Between first and second distate, sacrifice was removed. And between second distate and the end of the game, balance and knowledge were removed. Using this, we can theorize what caused the removal of each of these. Love can be seen as the first seal that breaks based off this knowledge. The seal would break due to Ulster deciding to go on this adventure of love and search for her lost lover. Granted, at the start of the game, she may not remember her lover's identity, she may not remember what she looks like, and she may be thinking it's this girl named Elena. But, at the very least, she is going on a quest in the name of love and due to loving someone. If a specific moment in the game is to be named a turning point event that might have broken the seal, it could be her refusing to leave the facility after the star tells her to, her choosing love and continuing rather than choosing herself and running away, even though someone directly told her to do so. Eternity can be seen as the second seal that breaks based off this knowledge. This one would break when one acquires the eternity plate in the butterfly box, as upon the physical acquirement of the plate, we remove the seal from the book. It breaks not just due to the physical acquirement, it also breaks due to Elster's interaction with bioresonance and the distortion that is causing the cycles. By interacting with these, she is noticing the eternity and continuing despite them. She's trying to make progress and break eternity. A second possible moment could be when she broke a cycle, which can be seen as her surviving the elevator shaft. As it seems in all prior eternities, she died after hitting the bottom, and that can kind of be seen as her changing the course of history of it. Flesh is a difficult one to theorize about. Uh, most theories I've seen places it in nowhere, but based off data mining, it can't land there, which is another example of why perhaps data mining could be completely wrong in this regard. However, it can be seen as the moment, at least if we play by the data mining rules, that Elster falls down the elevator shaft, as symbolized by her following on a pile of her own flesh in order to survive and continue to progress with her journey. 
or it can be seen as being unlocked during the beginning of the game with the Yules cutting up the flesh and Elsa traversing the flesh infested halls of personnel. The assumption should be that whatever room didn't cause eternity to unlock likely had flesh unlock in close proximity. So you can't have both seals unlock due to her hitting the bottom of the elevator. But if she didn't unlock eternity then, she most likely unlocked flesh. It kind of, hopefully that makes some semblance of sense. Because next we have sacrifice. This is the seal unlocked between first and second guest state, meaning it unlocks somewhere during nowhere, the fake ending, and memory. This is a very eventful period of the game, however the only thing that really resembles a sacrifice of Elster would be her decision to take the armor and arm of the previous Elster. By doing this, her past, or future depending on how you look at this, self-sacrificed her parts in order to help continue the journey and pursue the promise. Perhaps the sacrifice could also be viewed as this prior Elster's failure to end the cycle, and our Elster's opening half opening the hatch, creating a situation where the journey could be continued. Either way, there had to have been a sacrifice during this time, and if it got to be placed anywhere, it most likely is the sacrifice of the previous Elster to ensure that our Elster can continue. From here, we have the final part of the game and the final two seals. Following second estate is Corrupted Reedge and Rotfront, which close out the game. Balance would have to be unlocked during this part of the game, however how exactly is not defined clearly in theory. One possibility is the restoration of balance by the death of Issa. By someone who died long ago returning to the state of death, it represents a restoration of balance of sorts. This can be further supported by the fact she was also someone who did the ritual, and by her passing, the influence on the ritual she has, and this space, has weakened, which gives Elster greater control. However, seeing as this would suggest that this plate is the only one broken by an action out of Elster's control, I find it rather unlikely. So, what other events that occurred within Rotfront that could possibly explain this, I currently don't have an answer to. Knowledge is likely to have been unlocked last. The exact circumstances for which can vary, as Rotfront is a part of the game that has large plot developments in knowledge regard. Uh, one option could be learning of Issa's fate, of course this would require that it didn't unlock balance, um, but another option is the completion of the Maldenkind puzzle, because this can be seen as a moment that required Ulster to have lots of knowledge about various things, does to complete the puzzle, you need to read the Dreamer's Diary, gather the Six Terret, and explore all of Rotfront, which means you have the most amount of knowledge that is possible for Elster to have going into the final act, but Irregardless, there must have been at least one point within Rotfront that was knowledge-based. I think even ignoring data mining, I think knowledge most likely was the final seal of the game, really, regardless how you look at it. Again, this solution required information from data mining, which Yuri has stated is not to be used to shape our understanding of lore in the game. Due to this, any possible combination of points of the game that can be used to connotate the removal of the seals works, as long as it follows what normal gameplay states. I just preferred to use the data mining answer because if any answer works, we may as well try and follow the rules of the code. So let's explore some other questions while we are here with these seals, such as why is the King in Yellow sealed in the first place? The book as we see it in game is sealed by the seals, however the reason that is is not exactly stated to us nor indirectly referenced by any notes, which leaves it in the realm of theory. One concept is that the book is sealed by an external power, with some wagering that it was the Grand Empress who sealed the book, and that is why the flesh presents her grave to us. This would also connect to the Empire's heavy connections to the book, as well as the fact that the Empress was very powerful during her life. Another theory is that the book is sealed by right of usage, as an Ulster is not fit to use the book until she has completed its various trials. This could be her needing to gain enough control over herself and her brain in order to harness its full power. However, that is unlikely, as in the Kenyan Yellow, most of its readers are driven insane by the book. So rather, perhaps the trials are a testament to how engrossed she is in the character role she's subscribing herself to, that being of the original Elster 512, which, spoiler, our Elster is not. Next question, why these seals? Seals that Elster has to break of knowledge, love, balance, eternity, flesh, and sacrifice represent important milestones of her journey. However, why these seals are chosen is unknown and left to theory. 
One theory is that it represents fully becoming the character that you are representing from the play. Love, sharing of their passion and desires. Flesh, sharing of their physical traits. Sacrifice, willing to lose in the name of becoming akin to them. Eternity, willing to hold that status into the future. Balance, finding pieces of this new character and fully balancing your role as them. Knowledge, knowing that the nature of your change has occurred, but still embracing it. Granted, this is a very rough idea, and further theorization will be required in order to really cement anything in this regard. Finally, what connections do they hold to the keys? The three keys required for the secret Lily ending hold the names as specific seals on the king, love, sacrifice, and eternity. These three keys, as theorized, is going even further than just breaking the seal, but rather hyper-focusing on the attributes of the seal and channeling them through the king to materialize something new. So, with that, we have covered everything I can think of regarding the keys, the seals, and this entire ordeal. We are approaching the finale of the King in Yellow series quite quickly, and I've enjoyed being able to delve deeply into this asset of the lore and uncover what it means with you all. Hopefully you all have been enjoying it as much as I have been, and hopefully we are starting to feel like we are approaching an actual understanding of the lore as a whole. If you'd like to talk to other Signalis fans about the lore just in general, I have two discords linked below my main Discord VSL, and a Signalis Discord, Unoff. They are both cool places, and I suggest them both. Finally, once again, thank you to Mr. Skelly for supporting my membership. Your contributions help make this series possible. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.